Hello friends, in this video we shall discuss with respect to AWE paper which was conducted by KPCL on 18th February 2024. The paper consisted of 100 question which was for 100 marks. In this part 1 video we shall discuss from question number 1 to question number 25. I have designed this part 1 video in such a way that all sorts of easy question is being included in this part 1 video. Now with respect to electronics point of view, most of the questions were from analog electronics, network analysis and microcontroller. With respect to electrical's point of view, transformers, alternators, these questions are focused more. Now in this first question, what they are asking us to find is, they are asking us to find the collector current and the voltage across collector to emitter terminal. Now the given transistor is a NPN transistor, we have provided the biasing also. There are two modes of operation, one is the transistor may be operating in linear region and the second one is the transistor may be operating in saturation region. We have to justify that the transistor is operating in linear region. How can I justify is, see VCE is not equal to 0.2 volts in any of the given option. So the transistor is not operating in saturation region. So the transistor is operating in linear region the transistor is operating in linear region very very important now this is a resistance rb the current that is getting into this resistor i'm going to call it as ib nothing but base current this current is flowing through base terminal of npn transistor and this is correct this is collector terminal so the collector current i'm going to denote by ic and this is emitter terminal this emitter terminal is IE which is equals to IB plus IC or I can tell IC equals to beta times of IB so which is equals to 1 plus beta times of IB. Collector current plus base current which is equals to emitter current but what is the value of IC beta times of IB straight away I have written in this way. Now we shall find the current that is IB by applying KVL to the left loop and we shall find the collector current by applying IC equals to beta times of IB. Next we are going to find the collector to emitter voltage by applying a KVL to KVL to outer loop KVL to outer loop right. Now if I am applying KVL to the left side loop, what I am going to get is a plus 20 minus 5 10 times of IB. Now I am not going to write that kilo term. Why I am not going to write the kilo term means see the resistance is in the order of kilo, then the current will be in the order of milli. The current will be in the order of milli, right? Next, it is a minus 0.7 minus 1.5 times of already have told that IE equals to IC plus IB which is equals to 1 plus beta times of IB then what is the value of beta under they are given so it is 101 times of IB which is equals to 0 I am going to get. Now IB terms if I am sending on the right side then the remaining terms that I have left with is a 20 minus 0.7 which is a 19.3 which is 19.3 whole divided by 5 10 minus 1.5 times of 101 right. This is corresponding to 661.5 which is equals to what is the value you are going to get 0 0.029 you are going to get 0 0.029 you are going to get. So, at last what you have to append is a milliampere you are going to append. Why? The resistance is in the order of kilo. So it is 0 0.029 milli or I can write it as 29 microamperes also. I can also write it as 29 microamperes. Now we know that the transistor is operating in linear region. So the collector current which is equals to beta times of IB. What is the value of beta which is equals to 100? multiplied by what is the value of base current what is the value of base current it is 0.029 it is 0.029 so this is equals to 2.9 milliampere 
so the value of collector current which is a uh, 2.9 milli amperes the option c s a s is a uh, 2.92 why that second decimal point is varying means uh, c is 60 661.5 something is there i have neglected it because of that i am going to get this changes so the value of collector current is ic which is equals to 2.92 milli amperes 2.92 milli amperes now look at the values of collector to emitter voltages huge difference is there so should i solve precisely no rough calculation is uh, more than enough if i am applying kvl for the outer loop what i am going to get is plus 20 minus 2.4 times of ic minus the voltage drop is vc minus 1.5 times of 1.5 times of see already we have calculated what is the value of ie the value of ie is ib plus ic which is equals to 2.929 milliamps right which is equals to zero what is the value of collector current i'm going to get 2.9 milli now sending this vce term on the right side what i'm going to get is vce which is equals to 8.64 volts we are going to get roughly or approximately it is 8.61 volts the corresponding option that is going to follow is option a is correct how we have calculated is the first kvl for the left loop then kvl for the right side loop so kvl for the input loop if i am applying then i am going to get the value of base current that is ib with the help of ib i have calculated the values of ic you can calculate the values of ie also then kvl for the output loop what you are going to get is vce which is equals to 8.64 volts or approximately 8.61 volts also you can take which is option a is correct in the second question what they have given is the cascade amplifier is a multi stage configuration of dash they are asking we know that in the case of cascade amplifier we are going to have common emitter configuration followed by common collector configuration see this common emitter configuration is a meant for amplification purpose but this common collector configuration is used for impedance matching purpose is used for impedance matching purpose or you can call it as a buffer also you can call it as a buffer also so in the case of cascade it is a common emitter followed by common collector configuration also you should know what are the parameters of common collector configuration gain is approximately equals to 1 input impedance is high output impedance is low because of that we are going to use at the final stage of the circuit in the case of cas code if i am talking in the case of cas code if i am talking it is a common emitter configuration followed by common base configuration common emitter configuration followed by common base configuration in the case of cascade it is common emitter followed by common collector configuration that is option d is going to follow in the third question this question is from digital electronics such a simple question from uh, multiplexer combinational part they have asked see these are inputs how many inputs are there means a 2 power n input should be there how many output should be there means only one output and the number of select lines is n why i am explaining all these things is next question is from d multiplexer so these things are very very important so parallel data is being converted to serial data based on the select lines which input should be driven to output is selected by based on the select lines only when a and b are zero zero i not will be selected when a and b are zero zero when a and b are zero one when a and b are one zero when a b which is equals to one one when it is zero zero i not will be selected what is the value of i not it is a c when it is 0 1 i1 will be selected what is the value it is c bar when it is 1 0 i2 will be selected what is the value of i2 c when it is 1 1 then uh, i3 data will be selected what is the value of i3 c bar 
Now, in the first two term, you take A bar as common. If I am taking A bar as common, it is a B bar C plus B C bar. In the next set of terms, I am going to take a, I am going to take A as common. So I am left with B bar C plus B C bar. Now, among these two terms, what I am going to take is a B bar C plus B C bar. I am going to take it as common, which is a A bar plus A. What is A bar plus A, which is equals to one? Why? When a equals to zero, a bar will become one. When a equals to one, a bar equals to zero. One plus zero is one. Straight away we can arrive at the answer. So it is a b bar c plus b c bar, which is a b x r with the c, b x r with c. Option d is going to follow. This is one method of solving. The another method of solving is with the help of K map. Now. This is a summation m of zero zero one means what one zero one zero means what two one zero one means what five one one zero means what six. That's it. How many variable K map we are going to make use? Three variable K map we are going to use. Why? Maximum data is up to six we are getting, so it is eight cells we are going to take. A, B, C, zero one, zero 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 one 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 zero. Cell values are zero one, two three, four five. Then it is six and seven. So the values are one, two, five, six. Zero cell is zero. Third cell is zero, fourth cell is zero, and seventh cell is zero. Now look at the things. What is the corresponding value? It is B bar C. What is the corresponding value? It is B C bar plus. So the value of F will be equals to B bar C plus B C bar, or I can write it as B X R with C. Very very important. And next question. In this fourth question, what they are asking is the frequency of the output of eight flip flops when the input frequency is five twelve kilohertz. The input frequency is five twelve kilohertz. It is given to eight flip flops. What is the output of the eighth flip flop? They are asking. We know that the configuration we are going to make use is asynchronous and it is a, a counter type of circuit, right? Up counter or down counter. But in this case, it is down counter. The input frequency is a five twelve kilo. First stage, if you are giving, then uh, the clock frequency will be reduced to two fifty six kilo. The next stage, two fifty six kilo, will be used, and the output is one twenty eight kilo. So it is a divided by two circuit. Then. In the next stage, it it is one twenty eight divided by two, which is a sixty four kilo. The output of third stage, right? The output of fourth stage is a thirty two kilohertz. Next, the output of fifth stage is a sixteen kilohertz. I am not going to write this kilo. You please write. Then it is eight kilo. Then eight by two, which is four kilohertz. Output of seventh stage is four kilohertz. Then output of eighth stage is eighth stage is two kilohertz. Output of eighth stage is two kilohertz. So the corresponding option that is going to follow is option D is correct. In the case of asynchronous design and that to down counter they have considered. So It is a frequency division circuit or frequency divider circuit. Each flip flop divided by two, you can consider straight away in one moment. If you want to solve, it is a five twelve kilo divided by how many flip flops are there? Eight flip flops. So it is two power eight. So which is the five twelve divided by what is two power eight? It is a two fifty six. Two fifty six into two is how much? Five twelve, which is equals to two. 
unit kilohertz because kilo we have not written so at last we are going to apply 2 kilohertz that's it in the next question what they are given is see this question is based on pos logic how we are going to represent pos means a pi m of pi m of now look at the things if you are not writing the complement if you are not writing the complement then it is a false logic if you have written the complement then it is a true logic so you have to read it as a 0 1 0 nothing but 2 1 1 0 6 0 1 1 it is a 3 so in the case of pos in the case of pos it is a 2 6 3 we know that the parser is a functionally equivalent to SOP. The expression you are going to get the same. I am not telling the parse terms are equivalent to soft terms. I am telling the soft terms are functionally equivalent to parse terms. Which is equals to summation M of the remaining values you are going to write. 0, 1, 2, 3 already written. 4, 5 and 7. So it is option B is going to follow. If I want to prove it, how you have to solve is make use of KMAP. In the case of SOP, SOP, you have to group for ones. In the case of POS, you have to group for zeros. You have to group for zeros. Very, very important. So the corresponding option that is going to follow is option B is correct. In the sixth question, what they have given is, we have to find the value of y. Nothing but we have to get the expression of y. This is AND gate. So the output of AND gate is A bar B. This is an inverter. B is the input. Output is B bar. R gate output is B bar plus C. B bar plus C. AND gate output, what you are going to get? A into B. This is one term into b bar plus c which is a into b into b bar plus a into b into c what is b into b bar which is 0 why say suppose b equals to 0 then b bar will become 1 0 multiplied by 1 is 0 only if b equals to 1 then b bar will be equals to 0 then also you are going to get the value as a 0 only so what is the term that is a left out is a b c is it not easy a b c corresponding option that's going to follow is option c is correct these kind of questions if you are taking more than five seconds to solve then somewhere you will be out of race till now if you have followed the solution video please give it a big thumbs up the number of select lines required in the single input and n output uh, d multiplexer is single input and n output d multiplexer is this is very very important now what i am telling is see in the case of multiplexer 2 power n input should be there only one output should be there 2 power n inputs one output and n select lines should be there now in this this question is somewhere uh, like Im improper one input will be there how many output means you will be having two power n outputs how many select lines you will be having means there are n select lines there are n select lines this is the actual definition of d multiplexer but what they are telling is we are not having a two power n outputs instead we are having only n outputs assume that the value of n is 4 how many select lines are required means two select lines are more than enough. Two select lines are more than enough. Right? Now, again, say suppose, say suppose the output should be 5. Then the select line should be 3. Like this, if you are solving, the question seems to be improper. The output should be 2 power n. Then the number of select lines is how much? The number of select lines is n. Let us uh, slightly modify the first option. In the first option, they would have given like this. Log to the base 2 into 2 power n. Into 2 power n. So, 
what is this value so it is n log of 2 base 2 which is equals to n which is equals to n strictly speaking option a should follow with slight modification but they have given the n output d multiplexer then the outputs are what is the range 1 4 9 16 32 like this you will be having then the number of uh, select lines required is log into the base 2 log into the base 2 so option d is going to follow in the way what they have given in the way what they have given but the definition of demultiplexer is one input should be there then two power n outputs will be having based on the n select lines the input will be driven to the corresponding output it is serial to parallel converter Multiplexer is parallel to serial converter. Next question, the Theminian's voltage and resistance of the circuit are respectively. Now, how we are going to find the Theminian's voltage means first RL we are going to remove. Then we are going to take this voltage as open circuit voltage. I am going to call this as VOC or you can call it as VTH also, the Theminian's voltage. Now, this is a one node treated as ground and this is another super node applying nodal analysis at this point finish left side what is the current you are going to get it is a vth minus 20 divided by 24 bottom current is a 2 right side current is a 0 which is equals to 0 so what is the value you are going to get means vth minus 20 plus 48 which is equals to 0 what is the value of VTH you are going to get? The value of VTH is a minus 28 volts you are going to get. The value of VTH is a minus 28 volts you are going to get. Only one option that is A option. Finish. No need to solve the value of RTH I am going to say. No need to find the values of RTH also. No problem. If you want to find the value of RTH. Now remove the load resistance then start looking from at this point. Start looking at this point. Now, all the voltage source need to be treated as a short circuit. All the voltage source need to, need to be treated as a short circuit. And all the current source need to be treated as open circuit. All the current source need to be treated as open circuit. Now, what is the circuit you are left with is, see, only this part is remaining for you. This is 24 ohm. Looking at this point, this is RTH. What is the resistance you are seeing? The resistance value is 24 ohms. That's it. So, what is the value of VTH? Final circuit, if I am writing, the value of VTH is minus 28 volts. If you don't want to write that minus sign means just invert the battery potential. That's it. The resistance value is 24 ohms. The resistance value is 24 ohms. At last, you fix up the value of RL resistor. What is the value of RL resistor? 16 ohms. Now, look at the things. 20 volt battery, 24 ohm resistor and 2 ampere current source. All these things are replaced by your single Theminian's voltage source. That is a minus 28 volts value. And single resistance, call it as a Theminian's resistance. That is 24 ohms. So, corresponding option that is going to follow is option A is correct. The position of stack pointer af after uh, resetting the microcontroller is uh, 07H. Very, very easy question. Option C. Internal RAM address of a uh, SCON register in the case of 8051 microcontroller is a uh, 98H. Option B. SCON, TCON, PCON, all these things are important. The configuration is also important. The status of auxiliary carry flag and parity flag after doing addition they are asking what is the value of uh, A? It is a 9C. It is being added with a 64 immediate value and that to hexadecimal H they have given. 9 it is 1001. C means what 12 double one double zero. 6 means what how you are going to write 0110. 4 0, 1, 0, 0. 
when you are trying to add what you are going to get is 0, 0, 1 plus 1 is what? 0, 1. 1 plus 1 is what? 0, 1. 1 plus 1 is what? 0, 1. 0, 1. 0, 1. 0, 1. At last you are going to get this one. What is this value means this value is going to denote by carry flag. Carry flag. Is there any carry from a lower significant nibble to higher significant nibble? Right? From a lower nibble to upper nibble, is there any carry? Yes, there is a carry. So that is defined as auxiliary carry. So the value of auxiliary carry is 1. So A and B options is uh, eliminated easily. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. How many zeros are there? There are 0, zeros are there. Nothing but can I tell it is even number of zeros. Even zeros are there. Then what is the value of parity flag? In the case of even parity, then the value of parity flag is 1. In the case of odd parity, odd number of 1s, then the parity flag is 0. In the case of even parity, it is 1. That's it. Option D is going to follow. Which of the following statement is true? This question is based on control system. The root locus is symmetrical about real axis true, but imaginary axis they have given it is false. The root locus should start at 0 and terminate at pole. Reverse way they have given. Inverse root locus means option B would have been correct. The breakaway point must lie on root locus. By default, it is going to lie on root locus only. The number of root locus approaching to infinity is equal to number of poles. No, it is wrong. So, the corresponding option that is going to follow is option C is correct. Very, very important. The largest between sorry the largest error between the reference input say this is a reference input and output at the transient state <coughs> output at the transient state is called as is called as is called as right sorry this waveform you consider uh, this is the output we want so this waveform you consider hmm. next question the largest error between the reference input and output during the transients is called as see during the transients they are asking actual output we want this one only but you are going to get something like this what is this value it is a peak overshoot it is the peak overshoot option C is going to follow now this question is a improper or incomplete I can tell they are going to give grace marks. Why? They have not specified that H1 term and they have not specified the G4 term also. They have not specified that G4 term also. See, in the forward path, how can you consider this G3 is uh, important? G1, G2 you can consider. Then G2, G3 they are telling which is wrong. G2, G3 they are telling can't be However, whatever the diagram you want to write, you write G2, G3 will not be a forward path. G2 and G3 will not be a forward path. So, definitely you can ask for a grace marks. Right? The divergence of D, D equals to rho V by epsilon. Right? Alone positive charges do exist. Alone negative charges do exist. But in the case of magnetic field north pole alone is not going to exist or south pole alone it is not going to exist so only we are going to get a del dot d equals to rho v by epsilon what is del dot b equals to zero radial motion rotational motion based on these things only we have derived so it is option b that is a rho v by epsilon Next, the number of independent loops for a network with the n nodes and n branches is given by b minus n plus 1 straight away in many of the competitive exams they have asked that is b minus n plus 1 very very important. In the 17th question what they have asked is the pointing vector is given by e cross h option a see simple questions they have asked 
एटीन क्वेश्चन विच वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग सेमी कंडक्टर इज नॉट अ करेंट ट्रिगर डिवाइस दे रिस्टर इज अ करेंट ट्रिगर डिवाइस गेट पल्स वी आर गोइंग टू गिव इन द केस ऑफ ट्रैक वी कैन वी कैन पास द करेंट और विदड्रॉ द करेंट इन द केस ऑफ जी टी ओ द सेम मैकेनिज्म बट इन द केस ऑफ मॉस फेट इट इज अ वोल्टेज कंट्रोल डिवाइस नो एनी करेंट विल बी फ्लोइंग टू द गेट टर्मिनल नथिंग बट ट्रिगरिंग वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू मेक यूज ऑफ द करेंट वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ऑप्शन बी इज गोइंग टू फॉलो little bit of basics if you are knowing that is more than enough in order to solve all the questions what i solved till now next 19th question see again it's a simple question which one of the following statement is false t a t equals to 0 delta of t value is going to exist But see this question also somewhere if you are uh, uh, looking precisely you can ask for a grace marks how i will be telling t is 0 what is the value of delta t it is a, a delta of t equals to 0 a delta of 0 then the value will be infinite zero and infinity is not defined straight away you can uh, get at this uh, solution i am going to solve this third option delta of t which is a impulse which is a derivative of u of t derivative of u of t similarly u of t is a derivative of ramp derivative of ramp similarly this uh, ramp is a derivative of parabolic ramp is a derivative of parabolic now what they have given instead of differentiation they have given it as a integration so straight away c option is wrong you think about a option also you think about a option also some of the persons what they are going to say, tell is zero multiplied by anything is zero straight away they are going to come up with uh, this way of explanation option c is going to follow if h of t is a impulse response of a causal that means what zero to infinity you have to consider you have to consider from zero to infinity simple convolution definition they have asked that's it right which is a time invariant continuous then y of t equals to integral 0 to t x of lambda into h of t minus lambda into d lambda option b is correct in a thai resistor anode current is made up of thai resistor means what how many layers are there these things are also very very important right pn pn you will be having pn pn strictly speaking uniform gapping will not be there here we are going to apply the gate pulse this is cathode terminal this is anode terminal in the case of anode in the case of anode the current is because of holes the current is because of holes anode current is made up of holes that is option b is going to follow you please think about electrons and holes also next question see there are a uh, three bits three digit representation this value can represent from 0 to 9 this value can also represent from 0 to 9 and even this value can also be uh, can also represent from 0 to 9 then what is the least value 0 0 0 what is the final value 9 9 9 what is this three and half digit one more digit will be there where it is going to represent either 0 or 1 it is going to represent either 0 or 1 now what is the sequence with this we are going to get 0 0 up to 0999 then 1 0 0 0 1999 what is the range 0 0 0 0 to 1999 can i tell the range is almost uh, doubled range is uh, increased by 2 so the corresponding option that is going to follow is option d is correct this question how we are going to solve simple thing in the case of op amp what they have given is this is a schmidt trigger circuit in the case of schmidt trigger circuit you are going to make use of positive feedback 
and you will be having the upper triggering point and lower triggering point. In many of the competitive exams, the, what they have asked is the definition of Smith trigger. In case of 2024, if you are going to the paper, the definition of Smith trigger they have asked. Now, what is the voltage? Let me call this resistance as R2 and let me call this resistance as R1. What is the current? Current is 50 micro multiplied by 40 kilo. What is the voltage value you are going to get? So it is a 50 multiplied by 40, which is 2000. 2000 kilo and micro will be milli. 2000 milli or 2 volts we can consider. The voltage drop is 2 volts across R2. So we are going to get the voltage across R2 is 2 volts. No any current will be flowing through the op amp. That to inverting and non-inverting terminals. So all the current will be the same current will be flowing through this R1 resistor also that is 50 micro. What is the voltage drop across R1 which is 50 micro multiplied by 180. 180. I am not going to write that micro and uh, kilo. Why? What is uh, 18590? 0, 0 you are going to append. Micro and kilo is milli. 9000 milli you can write or what is the voltage which is 9 volts. What is V naught? V naught is equals to V saturation which is equals to plus VCC which is equals to 9 plus 2. Nothing but VR1 plus VR2 we are going to take which is equals to 11 volts. Strictly speaking, V saturation is a 1 volt less we are going to take. That's the thumb rule. But in this case, we are going to approximate it because ideal scenario we have considered. The value of V naught is V saturation, which is 11 volts. What is the value of upper triggering point? The upper triggering point is defined as V saturation into R2 resistance divided by R1 plus R2. What is the value of V saturation? 11 into. What is the value of R2? The value of R2 is 40 divided by 220. 180 plus 40 is 220. I am not written kilo because in the numerator also kilo and in the denominator is also kilo. So the kilo and kilo is going to get cancelled. So what is the term that you have left is 11 multiplied by 40 is 440, 440 divided by 220, you are going to get it as 2 volts. So the value of UTP is 2 volts. The value of UTP which is equals to 2 volts. The corresponding option that is going to follow is option C is correct. The corresponding option that is going to follow is option C is correct. 24th question what they have given is the output waveform of the given circuit is. Now this question is something like a comparator. We are not having any feedback. Now the inverting terminal is connected to ground potential and the non-inverting terminal is connected to a sinusoidal waveform. Now when you are going to get plus V saturation and when you are going to get minus V saturation. When the V plus terminal potential if it is greater than V minus then what is the output voltage we are going to get? V saturation or plus VCC. When V plus E is less than V minus, then we are going to get a minus V sat. Say suppose when V plus E equals to V minus, at that time you are going to get output as zero. So say suppose, say suppose input is something like this. Input is something like this. When the input is on the positive side of the waveform, then what should be the output? V plus is greater than zero. So you're going to get a plus V saturation. And V plus is less than V minus. So we are going to get a minus V saturation. So the output is a fluctuating between a V saturation and a minus V saturation. Already I've told the definition. The sinusoidal waveforms will be converted to a rectangular waveform or a square waveform. This is Schmidt trigger circuit. So you'll be having UTP and LTP, but in this case it is a, it is a comparator circuit. In this case it is a comparator circuit. 
and in the case of smith trigger you will be having the positive feedback there we are going to talk about utp and ltp very very important option b is going to follow last question so in the last question what they have given is see it is advisable to start a dc series motor with some load say suppose if you are not starting at uh, without a load if you are starting then it will be achieving the infinite speed at no load if you are uh, starting means it will be catching infinite speed nothing but what mechanical wear and tear will be there that's it so it is to limit the speed it is to limit the speed and in order to protect the circuit corresponding option that's going to follow is option c is correct corresponding option that's going to follow is option c is correct very very important i hope you can able to catch all 25 questions if you have followed with the solution video please give it a big thumbs up also share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel craving gyan all the best for exams thank you in the next part of the video we shall discuss from question number 26 to question number 50 comment your score in the comment section thank you friends all the best for exams